we can estimate the square root of 19 by using what we know about the square root of 16 and the square root of 25. We know the square root of 16 is 4, and we know that the square root of 25 is 5. And it turns out that there's 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, to get from 16 to 25. We're going to use that in a second. So how can we use the square root of 16 and the square root of 25 to kind of estimate the square root of 19? We know it's going to be 4 and something. And let's get to 19. So 16, 17, 18, 19. So three of our nine squares that we would need to complete the square root of 25 are filled in. So three of the nine. And it turns out that four and one third is a pretty good approximation for the square root of 19. But this feels a little bit funny because this is a square and these are just kind of three squares hanging out. It doesn't really seem like, you know, we're talking about the same um, kind of thing here. So I want to replace these three with thirds. we can spread these thirds out around the sides of this square root 16 to show you kind of that we're really building a new type of square, a square that has a fractional side length. We have a little corner here missing and that's, you know, this one we would have to then cut this one and spread it out and it's not going to be exact because the square root of 19 is an irrational number. But you get the idea here that we have uh, four and about one third uh, to approximate the square root of 19. So let's look at the square root of 33. Of 36 is 6, and 25 is 5. And there's 11 spaces to go from 25 to 36. So we know that we have 5 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 out of the 11 spaces it would take to get to the square root of 36. Let's say that you know what the square root of 25 is, but you don't know what the square root of 36 is. You just forgot it. So we know that the square root of 25 is 5, and to get to 36, we would need to fill in all 11 of these spaces. 36, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So 36 is 5 and 11 of those 11 spaces filled in, or 6. 